Hello everyone. In my previous video, I had discussed the importance of deep self-study and of improving one's problem-solving skills through spending a lot of time on each of the problems. While many of the students had responded positively to it and almost all of you had appreciated it, some students had correctly pointed out that if one were to study like this in a very deep fashion, spending a lot of time on each of the problems, there just won't be enough time left for all the subjects. And let me tell you, I completely feel you. I understand what you're trying to say here. And those of us who have gone through the process, we have all experienced this to one extent or another. So in this video, I thought it will be a good idea to clarify some of the concepts that I, uh, that I had mentioned about and also to discuss a few strategies and the new and the special attitude that you need to have if you have to study in this fashion. Let me tell you that there is no magic pill that I'm going to discuss. It is just basically common sense, but something which I will explicitly mention to you. So the first thing is that we should be very clear about what we mean by deep self-study. So what is meant is that you do not spend, that we do not spend our whole time studying the theory. That is not deep self-study. Rather, we should study uh, as fast as possible the theory and as quickly as possible go to solving the problems. Now, when we are doing the problems during this entire process through self-reflection, through a deep analysis of our flaws and everything, we will inevitably realize that there are some deep flaws in our understanding of the theory. It is then, at this point, you must not we must not make this mistake of quickly looking at the solutions and just lying to ourselves that we have understood it. This would be a very, very big mistake. Rather, what we must do is to go back to the theory, revisit it and relearn the concepts in a fundamentally strong way. So this revisiting, revising and relearning in a uh, so that leads to the depth in our understanding, the removal of the flaws. So this is what is meant by deep self study not just learning the theory over and over again. It is in combination with problem solving. Now, <clears throat> regarding the point of time management. Now see, if you have to do self-study along with this, spending a lot of time with, uh, the, with each of the problems, you are definitely going to run short of time. I, as I said, I agree to this. But we must acknowledge the fact and accept that not all students are built equal. So some people will definitely manage to do this kind of self-study as well as do the problems and finish up everything before us. So there are certain students, some gifted students like that. So we should not feel discouraged about it. Okay, so these are some natural differences in our intellectual abilities which you have to live with. Plus, there is also the fact that many students, because of some proper guidance from their childhood or because of self-realization, whatever may be the reason, they perhaps started this journey of self-study, deep self-study a little bit earlier than us. That's why they are further along in their maturity level. And when in class 10 and class 11, it starts becoming very competitive and this kind of really deep study is necessary, probably they are already a little bit ahead of ourselves. But no matter, this is not a point of discouragement. Rather, what we should do is we should not uh, go and adopt some kind of shortcut method. It does not mean that we should not ourselves uh, sacrifice the correct and proper way of studying things in a fundamental way. That is absolutely necessary. We have to have to do it. So. When we do it, naturally, we have to do some sacrifices for us, for, for lesser mortals who are not gifted. Naturally, we have to do some sacrifices because we have to get our priorities straight. If we have to learn these advanced topics at the class 11 um, or class 12 stage in a proper fashion, then definitely some sacrifices are necessary. Now, uh, if we don't do that and we just adopt some kind of a shortcut method, then what will happen is that apparently it will it will seem to us that we are able to catch up with our more gifted friends on a very temporary basis. But in the long run, you will yourself discover that or we will ourselves discover that we 
are left with some gaping loopholes in our conceptual understanding in our overall preparation. So what must we do? We must stick to the discipline of learning things in a proper way, in a fundamentally proper way and uh, developing our problem solving skills through self analysis, introspection by spending, as I say again, by spending quite a bit of time on each of the problems. Instead of trying to cover a lot of quantity, we should also be mindful of the quality. Now, uh, as we keep on doing this, for the first few chapters, it may seem to us that we have started to lag behind many of our friends or perhaps in comparison to what the teacher also is teaching in class. No matter. Let it be so. Stick to your guts. Okay, we have to stick to, your, to our guts and we have to realize and this is where our attitude is very, very important. And this is like the heart and soul of this, of the message of this video is that in the initial few chapters, we may feel like that we are lagging behind but it keeps getting easier and easier as we uh, as we keep on sticking to this proper method of studying uh, our brains will start improving our way or our ability to to study in a proper way will keep on improving and in some of the later chapters we'll start to see the dividends of it we'll start to get the payback from our proper study methods so in the first few chapters life is going to be difficult okay this is true but slowly slowly as our mind improves as our intellectual ability improves uh, as our problem solving abilities improve we are going to be able to tackle the chapters in a slightly more uh, faster way and the good news is that the more chapters you cover in this kind of a fundamentally proper way the more background knowledge the deep background knowledge uh, will develop in your brain and this deep background knowledge will tremendously boost your preparation and your study of the later chapters. So the first few chapters, the, the, the knowledge, the basic knowledge that develops, that will tremendously boost your preparation for the later chapters. This is especially true in physics and to a large extent even in mathematics. And certainly in chemistry also it is important, but chemistry is slightly a bit different. Um, which in some of the topics are more information heavy, but it is especially true in physics and mathematics. Now, as opposed to this, if some of your friends are adopting some kind of shortcut methods, maybe they are getting ahead of you, but try to realize one very important, very simple thing. See, for each and every topic, if there are some shortcut methods, initially it may seem that okay, you are learning the shortcut methods and you are able to do some of the problems in a fast manner, maybe cover more a lot of ground uh, in a fast way. But as the number of chapters keeps on increasing and remember that the plus two syllabus is quite huge considering physics, chemistry and mathematics, how many shortcuts can you remember? It becomes way too heavy to remember so many different shortcuts for different different topics. Rather, instead of that, if you are learning things in a very fundamental way, the number of fundamental concepts is not that high. So if you learn free body diagram in physics properly, it helps you in each and every chapter. You don't have to learn any shortcut method. The, the knowledge itself is the shortcut for you. Please try to remember this. Even now on a daily basis, especially in mechanical engineering that I am now in, the, the ability to draw free body diagrams which I had developed back in my class 11 that has stood me in good stead even now on a daily basis and this would be true in other uh, and other topics in other abilities also so finally what i want to say to you is that please please do not compare yourself with others your only motivation is to improve your own self this is especially true in plus two Please don't think about competitive examinations like that, like preparation of competitive examinations versus preparation of board examinations, all these things. Concept is concept, scientific concepts are scientific concepts. So you try to improve your conceptual understanding in a deep fashion and just try to compare yourself what you are in this week versus what you are in the next week and what you are in the, in the week after that. So if you keep on improving little by little every week, there will be a tremendous difference between your abilities and your knowledge, what it is now and what it is three months later. Okay, so I hope, so, so combined with 
with with the sacrifice that as, as i mentioned earlier com, com, i mean combining this kind of a self improvement along with the sacrifice that you necessarily must put in to get your priorities straight and to focus on the highest priorities which if you're serious about academics it should be the academics i think it is a guaranteed journey towards a fundamentally correct way of improving your preparation and making it to really very comprehensive genuinely comprehensive that's all there is no magic pill as i said it's just a a, a difference in your attitude and your strategy of how you approach your studies so there are only 24 hours a day so you have to make the best use of what you have all right thank you very much all the best